Today we'll be taking a look at Hunix KVM. Now if you aren't familiar with Hunix, you can just head right over to hunix.org and take a look at the tagline they have on their website to get what it's all about. Hunix, the most watertight privacy operating system in the world. So this is an operating system that runs as a virtual machine, two virtual machines in fact. You have the Hunix gateway and then the Hunix workstation system. All of the operating system's traffic is sent through the Tor network, whether it's web traffic, whether it's package updates, even pings. They're all gonna go through the Onion router before hitting the clear web. So all of your traffic is anonymized by default. And because of this two VM system, it's pretty much impossible for hackers to de-anonymize you because well, in order for them to do that, they would have to disable the gateway, which is a much simpler VM. In fact, it can be run just as a TTY with a very, very small attack surface. And the gateway is separated from the guest Hunix OS, the workstation OS, which is what you're mostly going to be interacting with. That's where you're going to be going onto the Tor browser. That's where you might be downloading things from the dark net and so on and so forth but that guest isn't able to communicate out to the internet at all without connecting to the gateway first. So even if a hacker were to get root access on that workstation, they still wouldn't be able to get your real IP. And since it's a virtual machine, it's also, both of those boxes are also gonna be isolated from your host, which is probably where all your personal data, you know, all of the important data actually is. So obviously you don't really want to mix that with your dark web activity, which is why we have Hunix where you can do everything on the dark web in an isolated container. And by default, the VM is very secure. Uh, so there's no GPU pass through, LVM, clipboard sharing, huge pages, CPU pinning, or any of that stuff that you might want for something like a gaming VM or any other kind of virtual machine where you need really high performance. The Hunix Guest and the Gateway are also more secure than your typical Linux distro because both of them are using hardened kernels, they're using app armor, they're using encrypted swap partitions, keystroke anonymization, and other really high-end security techniques. So really the only way that your system is going to be able to be compromised with this kind of setup would be for you to download some really crazy malware that's able to overcome all of those additional security techniques and then escape the virtualization and get to your host machine. Now, in the past, I have made a video about running Hunix in VirtualBox, which is probably the way that most people use uh, Hunix, since VirtualBox is really easy to use, it's available on pretty much any distro, and uh, well, just setting it up is a lot simpler compared to other VM solutions, because of course KVM is in pretty much all modern distros now too. But VirtualBox is nowhere near as secure as KVM, because Oracle, the company behind uh, VirtualBox, is much less transparent KVM uses a GPL license, so I mean, you really can't get more transparent than that, right? But more importantly, Oracle has a track record of not fixing security bugs in a timely manner within VirtualBox and also just not being very transparent about what those security bugs were in the first place. So if you're going to be using a virtual machine where you may possibly run software downloaded from the dark web, it's really recommended that you use KVM or some kind of virtualization that's better than VirtualBox. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into the setup. So I'm not really gonna go over uh, the steps for setting up Vert Manager and everything like that. I mean, I made videos like that in the past already for both uh, Gen 2 and Arch. So just look up whatever guide for your distribution. You know, any distro worth its salt should have a guide on their wiki or their forums for you to set up libvert. Once libvert and your default virtual networks are set up, go ahead and download Hunix XFCE 
and then you want to unpack it. So when you do that, you're gonna have several different files inside of it. You're gonna have, of course, uh, disclaimers and license agreements, uh, but it's GPL, so nothing too crazy there to worry about. You're gonna have QCAL files, so those are like the virtual disk for the virtual machines, and then you have these XML files which are for the virtual networks and just configurations for the virtual networks and for the virtual machines. Uh, you don't really want to edit anything with the virtual networks, but with the virtual machines like the .xml, uh, like Hunix Workstation and the Hunix Gateway, you might want to edit those a little bit uh, just to like give them more RAM and more CPU for your system because by default, they're going to be very, very light. Uh, I think the Hunix gateway is like 256 megs of RAM and a single uh, virtual CPU. And then same thing with the workstation. Um, well, I think the workstation is like maybe one gig of RAM and one virtual CPU. But on my system, for example, I'm running a Threadripper and 128 gigs of RAM. So if I'm going to use Hunix, I'll probably be able to spare it a little bit more resources. But don't try to do anything like CPU pinning or GPU pass through because again, that's going to ruin a little bit of the Hunix security that's going on. So once the files are extracted, you're gonna to wanna to just open up a terminal in that directory and you're going to want to run uh, these versh commands. So this is going to create the network, the, the virtual networks, it's going to activate the virtual networks, and then you're going to import the Hunix gateway and workstation images into libvirt. And you also have to make sure that you move the QCAL images into the correct directory where your virtual machines run from. So by default, it's gonna be var lib libvirt images. And it's advised that you move the files and not copy them because they're sparse files. So you can't just use a regular CP command if you want to copy it for some reason. Uh, you have to make sure that you uh, use the sparse always flag when you're copying, if you're going to copy the gateway and the workstation. But like I said, if you move it, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, and then this is what your images are going to look like when you open up Libvirt. Um, so if we wanted to, we can start changing uh, some of their settings. So like you can see here that I gave the gateway two CPU cores and I gave it uh, one gig of memory. Another thing to keep in mind is the gateway. So the gateway really doesn't need this much. Um, but the main reason I'm doing this is because if you give it, I think under like 512 megs, that's just going to start as a TTY. And if you're a beginner to this stuff, I mean, you really should get comfortable with terminals, but um, you might want to just give it a little bit more RAM so that you can get a GUI for the gateway and check all of the things that we need to check inside. Because uh, we, we do have to start up the gateway first and we do have to do a little bit inside of it to make sure that it's good to go for running the workstation. Uh, so basically what we're going to do, uh, the first time you start it, it might take a little bit longer to start up. I have run this before. Um, but the main thing that you want to do uh, once Tor starts up is you want to run the system check. So you can go to this menu here, go to system, and then system check. And this is going to run through everything on your system. Like, just, well, it's not gonna do like a virus scan or anything, but it's just going to check a few things to make sure that everything is set up properly and that all of your packages are up to date, uh, that the Hunix repository is enabled. So, we're all good here now for the gateway. So what we can do is um, we basically don't even need to do anything with this, right? We can just minimize it and forget about it. So now we can start the Hunix workstation. And again, make sure that this starts before uh, the gateway starts before the workstation, because otherwise your workstation won't be able to connect to the Internet. Uh, and then we'll just open this up and. Yeah, we got the spice server running. So we'll just let it boot up. 
And um, actually, did I give? Huh, I'm actually using fewer CPUs on the workstation. All right, you know what? I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a little bit more. It doesn't make sense to be stingy with my CPUs. All right, so we'll do one socket, four cores, two threads. Apply and memory. Let's give it like. 16 gigs, so 16, 3, 8, 4. All right, and uh, yeah, everything else we're just gonna leave. Okay, so now we'll um, start this, some better performance. So we'll do um, Unix, GNU Linux, and make it bigger. Uh, and there's additional things that you could do, like you could encrypt the volume of your host. You know, like this is just a virtual machine. So there's there's definitely more steps that you can do to try to harden the whole system. Uh, all right, so when you're um, inside of the workstation, you wanna do the same thing by running the system check to make sure that everything's working right. So we'll open that up. Okay, and then same thing. If you're running this for the first time, you may need to run uh, like an upgrade of the system just to update all the packages and things like that. Uh, but this will tell you that when you run the system check. All right, so now we're able to start uh, doing some stuff. So of course we can uh, open a browser which is going to run Tor. And it looks like it was updating. So yeah, you're gonna want to also make sure that Tor itself is up to date. So it looks like, um, yep, Tor is up to date. Okay, cool. So yeah, everything is going to be going through Tor. Uh, of course, if I look up what is my IP on Tor, you know, that's, that's obviously gonna tell me that it's a Tor IP, right? Well, you can just see from here that it thinks I'm in Switzerland. But another cool thing is Hunix actually creates different circuits for pretty much every single process that's going to connect to the internet. So when you're running Tor, uh, you're gonna have the same identity for your entire session, um, unless you, know, you go up here and you request a new identity. But if you do um, something like this, in your terminal. So this is just getting what my IP is. So it gives me a Tor IP, but then every single time I run this, it's gonna give me a different IP. Because every time I do this, it's establishing a new circuit. I mean, eventually they might repeat because you know there's a limited number of Tor nodes. Uh, but that's another cool thing that's implemented in Hunix that gives you a little bit more uh, anonymity, right? Because maybe somebody is gonna try to detect if you're doing the same pings or the same curls from the same IP address. And of course, there's lots of other useful applications uh, inside of Hunix. If we go to all applications, so you can see we have hex chat for uh, using or, or communicating to an IRC. So just you know, a little IRC client. Uh, we've got keypass XC. So of course that's gonna be for managing credentials inside of your VM. You don't wanna mix your clear web credentials and your non VM credentials inside of here. That would be very bad OPSEC. Uh, we've also got a Monero wallet. So pretty much everything that you would need for your darknet activities uh, is in here. You know, of course you've got Tor, uh, I believe Electrum wallet is in here too. Yeah, Electrum Bitcoin wallet. So everything that you would need for darknet activities, um, you know, there's also some things like media players. I mean, I wouldn't really consider this to be uh, like a daily driver. I mean, I guess you could use it as a daily driver, um, but maybe cubes would be a better type of uh, thing to run if you want like a really secure and private daily driver. 
But yeah, this is a great virtual machine for browsing the dark web. Uh, it's pretty similar to Tails, but it's a lot more convenient than Tails because you don't have to restart your computer and you know boot into Tails. And since this is in a virtual machine, you could just have clear web activity going on this host in the same time. You could have a browser off to the side or I don't know, maybe a Steam game or something else like that. And all of it's going to be isolated uh, from this VM here. The only downside with Hunix is that it is not amnesic by default. Uh, so whenever you write things to the file system, they do get saved. Now it is possible, uh, I'll show you guys if I restart it here. Uh, it is possible to run Hunix in a live mode. All right, so we have this live mode here. And I can go into that and demonstrate to you that it doesn't uh, persist changes made to the virtual disk. Like if you create a file or folder or whatever, then it's going to erase when you restart it. Yeah, so like if I just create a folder, call it test, and then if I reboot now, that test folder is gonna be gone. So there you go. Um, now, it's, it's not truly amnesic, I guess non-persistent would be a better way to describe running Hunix in a live mode because it wouldn't prevent, like you see the folder is gone. So things like persistent malware would get erased if you run Hunix in live mode, but it wouldn't prevent someone from discovering your darknet activities if they were to get physical access to your machine. Okay, so you could have the VM shut down but if they were to do a forensic analysis of the hard drive or the RAM of your host system that the virtual machines are running in, uh, then they may be able to find things. So if you really want to try to use Hunex in an amnesic way, similar to Tails, then there's some additional steps that you have to follow that are outlined on uh, kicksecure.com which is what Hunix is based off of. So here they recommend that you do things like disabling swap for your entire system, including your host system. So the reason for this is more than likely your swap file is not encrypted, okay? So your, your swap can be read. Someone with access to your system can just read your swap as plain text and swap it basically acts like RAM, right? But the problem is RAM usually has a lot of sensitive things loaded into it, like it, it'll have cryptographic keys and things like that loaded into it. Now, this isn't too much of a problem because whenever you power off a system, RAM gets erased, but swap doesn't necessarily get erased when you power off your system. And what's even crazier is if you use things like hibernation and I think sleep as well, the entire contents of your RAM get written to your swap file. Okay, so if you were in a situation like that where all of, you know, you had your system hibernating, then the hard drive that has your swap file could be taken and done they do a forensic analysis on it and everything that was in your RAM could be read. And again, that could potentially be uh, items from any virtual machine that you're running, not just Hunix. So if you want it to be amnesic, you have to do things like disable swap, disable crash dumps on the host system. Uh, and it's also a good idea to just leave, use the host in a live mode. But at that point, then it probably just makes more sense to use Tails, right? And it's also worth pointing out that virtualization as an isolation technique, as a security technique, is not a magic bullet. It does, it does make it much more difficult for someone to penetrate the host because 
they'd have to escape the VM and then compromise the host as well, which is well beyond the capabilities of most hackers. But just because this is fairly secure, you know, using a KVM virtual machine, doesn't mean that it's not worth thinking about. So you really wanna make sure that the host is secure. That's probably where the biggest variable is gonna be because chances are you aren't changing the source code of KVM or libvirt or QEMU and then compiling it yourself. Um, so yeah, host has to be really secure and you do kinda wanna think about the virtualization tech. So KVM is pretty solid, but Zen is, actually an even more secure option. Uh, it has a smaller attack surface. So if you were to want run something like Cube's bare metal hypervisor, which is a Zen hypervisor, and then run Hunix as a VM inside of that, then you'd have a little bit more security. But look, don't get me wrong, Hunix KVM is still light years ahead of just using Tor on a regular host and not having any type of virtualization going on. So definitely try this out. If you're looking for getting into the dark net, but maybe you're worried about your machine getting taken over or whatever, uh, like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.